Hi guys, Evan here. Welcome back to the channel. We're doing kind of a kind of a minor repair. It's not uh, we're not like doing a full bucket curl and everything. We're just uh, kind of replacing all the all the wear edges on a bucket. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, we checked with the clients if they wanted to do the cutting edge. They said no. So we're not doing it. What I've got so far, I went ahead and I just made myself a little template. I've already cut out those pieces and then I'm just gonna cut the backing bars out and then we'll move on to gouging the old stuff off. So today we got the liquid wrench. I always have two tips with me because I'm a mechanic. I have at least two tips. I've got more. So I'm running a, a number six tip, which is really big. I run a really big one just because uh, I can cut a lot faster with it. This is my, my repair tip, I call it. This is what I use for cutting out pins and everything else. Uh, the end gets all mucked up and your flame is pointed all over the place. So I don't like to use it for precision cutting, we'll call it. I carry a new one as well. And this one always stays in its little case and uh, it's nice and clean. Good for making nice straight cuts or clean cuts. So I'm just laying out uh, the backing bars. They don't have to be crazy perfect. This is going on a bucket. It's going to be in the dirt. The bucket is slightly tapered. So as we wrap around the bucket, these actually get a little bit shorter. I'm just going to cut them all the same length and I'll just nip the ends. Once it's on there, just makes layout and everything a lot easier. So I'm just going to make myself a guide for cutting all these very straight pieces. Something like that. This is the clamp of the Bessie. Probably some of the best, best clamps they make. These aren't actually Bessie clamps. These are strong hand. They've got this little doodad on the end. You can just whip this off and you can use it to spread too. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna cut the, the remaining four cuts freehand uh, just because I've never been a guide fan and it's, since you're dragging the torch head on it, it's kind of sticky, like it provides a point of friction. And so it's kind of a little jerky. It always sounds better than it actually works for me. So I just say screw it and freehand it, freehand. faster that was. And I think the accuracy was just as good. So I'm just gonna clean up all the edges uh, of all these pieces that I cut and then we'll just get all the slag off. And then uh, we're gonna set up and we'll start gouging the old stuff off the other bucket there. gouging time. Gonna get loud. Gonna rig this thing up here. Lift it. Use a little trusty here. This tractor, I added a feature. It's got built-in mosquito repellent now. I guess it kind of came with it, but. 
Keeps the bugs away. So this will get really loud and sparks are going to be flying everywhere. I'm going to try and shoot the sparks all kind of this-ish way. Hopefully we don't start anything on fire. When you're gouging, you're essentially taking the like the weld nugget out and you want to take as little as possible of the parent material, meaning the material that you need to save that you're going to reuse. So I try and gouge as much as I can into these bars because these are what we're replacing. So if you look, you see this is the weld. You'll never find a seam in a weld to be like right where the corner of the parent material or the material being welded on to the parent material you'll never find the seam when you're gouging to be like right where you would see it right now the weld nugget always goes past this corner and it's always inside a little bit so i just gouge past where this backing bar meets the the base metal here and then you can see i've like washed i've started to wash the backing bar away from where the weld is to uncover that seam and then i just follow it Follow it right to the end. Grinding away, just getting her prepped for welding the new stuff on. Lunch time. It's lunchtime. You can put the camera down. You've got an addiction, man. You need to call someone. Will the quarter ton be enough? try make an attempt at pulling this dent out of here so I've cut some P 
pieces of three quarter inch flat bar. It's actually those two pieces up against the wall. And we're gonna put those inside. I'm gonna weld them on edge and then put a 20 ton jack on it. And then we'll push up against the dent. I'm gonna heat this up red hot up here. So a little extra security. Oh yeah, perfect. Oh yeah. Nice and easy. I was thinking about doing this a different way, but now I'm just like, I just kind of said F it, I'll just do it like this. Oh, so easy. We'll just dog and wedge that down. And I think we're gonna have to dog and wedge everyone, which is all right. There we go. Ta -da! Way easier if the bucket was on its side. I need a crane, shop crane. It'd be a lot less work than always moving everything around. A dog and wedge. Don't ask me why they call this a dog, but they do. Dirty old dog. Oh, dude, this is so much better. Big old bendy wrench.
Oh, yeah. Beauty. I think now I'd like to flip it over. What do you think? I think so. It's a good call. Uh, I'd try it. Man, would hydraulic jacks be nice? Whoa! Who is running this thing? I have to say though, like, I do like this crane. Yeah, so what I did, these put on edge has a lot of vertical strength because it's Highly unlikely you're gonna bend it on edge this way versus if you had them flat this way, right? I just put a plate across this side here and then I had my bottle jack on top of that and was pushing on the dent there. And it actually came out reasonably well. I'm just gonna cut those out. I'm pretty happy the dent came out quite well, and, but uh, I think all in all it turned out pretty good. All right, so uh, we're done the bucket here. So what we did is we just gouged off and welded on new backing bars on the bottom because they were getting kind of thin. The customer was a little bit worried about the side of the bucket. Um, it doesn't seem to show too much wear, but anyways, we just welded on some uh, AR400 plate here on the sides too to prevent any wear. Some of you might be like, well, why aren't you hard facing that? I wanted to, and I offered to do it for the customer, but the customer didn't want to. So same with the cutting edge. Some of you might look at the cutting edge and be like, well, how come you didn't fix that? Uh, again, the customer just didn't want to do that. He says he doesn't need a cutting edge. So we just did this. Uh, we popped the dent out of the back and that's, that's it. That's, uh, this is a fairly basic bucket repair. So many times we go more in depth and we'll cut out the bottom or put new sides on or whatever. But anyways, this kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what it's all about. Thanks guys for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.